Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Welcome back to the Cyber Underground. I'm Dave Stevens, your host. I'm Dave the Cyber Guy here with Hal the Network Guy, Hal Cochran, who's a fellow instructor over at Capulani Community College for the University of Hawaii. Thanks for coming. Thanks for having me on again. Right on. Hey, today we're going to talk about uh, how to configure your home network. And uh, to, to a lot of people, this is not a big mystery um, because they just go buy a network device and they have their cable provider give them something and they plug everything in and they turn it on and, hey, it works and we're done. Right? Yep. Which is like straight. the worst possible thing you could do these days. So let's go, let's go over, you know, let's go over what it looks like first of all. You know, what the basic network configuration should be. We've got kind of a screenshot. This is a basic, basic network map. This is a little old. Uh, you can see a phone there from the 1980s. And, uh, and that, look, that looks like a Mac from the 80s. Yeah, right. yeah. But there's a, there's a couple of key components in here. So the telephone connection, a little lightning bolt in the upper left-hand corner. Telephone comes into what they got on this thing as a splitter. And the splitter will usually be something in your wall. And why you need that is because you come out with a piece of coaxial cable out of your wall, right? And you might have to split that into multiple devices. Mm -hmm. So one of those devices would be, and we show, show it here as a set-top box, but really right off the splitter, your, your network today will be something like a DVR, a digital video recorder, right? That is a set-top box and a, and a kind of an internal PC for your TV so you can record shows. But it has an IP address on the public network. It is exposed to the Internet. It is not managed by you, but it is in your home. Mm -hmm. So you got to watch out for this. Uh, in addition, uh, that splitter will also go into uh, a router, right? And a router, uh, or it, actually, we got to go through a cable modem first. So there's a signal conversion. You, you have this cable, usually digital signal now, but we used to have analog, and you got to convert that signal and split off the channels you need for internet out of that in a, in a cable modem. And the, the company that you get as your provider, Spectrum out here, or Time Warner, Comcast, they will give you that as part of your uh, internet service, right? Mm -hmm. And you pay $5 to rent the modem. You could get your own, but then they won't support it, All right? So you should, you should use theirs. And uh, that also is exposed to the internet, not managed by you, and your cable company is in control of that, and it is on your network. Mm -hmm. And usually you have one or two ports out of the back of that. You can physically plug in something to that cable modem. But what most people do is put a router on the other side. So let's discuss how we get multiple computers to hook up that one uh, cable modem through a router and how to hook that up and what the best practices are. So do me a favor, Hal. Go through what a router is, first of all. How do we arrive at a router? A, a router is a device that connects multiple networks, right? So ne networks don't, don't talk to each other except through a router. That's the whole purpose of a router is to connect one network to another network. So uh, the cable network coming into your house has to connect to a router that, that will connect it to the internal network. If, you, if you're going to have Wi-Fi, right, you're going to have a Wi-Fi router that's going to connect that network to now a wireless network. And uh, what most people call a, a Wi-Fi router is really kind of a, a multiple purpose device. It, it functions as a router. It also functions as a DHCP server and then it's giving out IP addresses to uh, wireless uh, devices as, as they join your network. Uh, it usually has a few ports in the back, like maybe three ports that uh, either a switch or a hub where you can connect multiple devices. Physical cables. That way where you can physically connect, you know, any Ethernet cable. Uh, it typically has some uh, firewalling uh, type functions. So we call it a router, but it's really kind of a, a, a multi-purpose device that, that serves a lot of different... Uh, a pure router, all it does is is forward packets from one network to another and vice versa. So uh, the reason these, these routers now have Wi-Fi is pretty much because we have so many devices we need to connect to our, mm -hmm. our, our, our networks these days. It can get out of control. We have another picture Absolutely. here with uh, 
uh, the house with all the different devices. Look at this. Mm -hmm. You can have webcams and locks and uh, mood lighting and home entertainments and everything from windows and home automation to the garage doors. Uh, your security system, your backup systems, all connected to this one home network. Mm -hmm. So really, if, if you set this up wrong and someone gets into it, you're looking at all those things being exposed in your life. Mm -hmm. And each one of those devices could be vulnerable, could, could be a vector for someone to come in and use that to take over your home network or to, you know, get free access to your home network or to, to take over some of those devices and use them for you know, some other type of purposes, either, either, either to monitor you or to, to launch attacks against other uh, sites. They could do all kinds of things. So each yeah. one of those devices could be a vulnerability. So you really need to be aware of how many different devices are around. And when you bring these devices in, into your house, and as you said, they, they, they usually auto-configure. You just turn them on, and they immediately search for your Wi-Fi network and try to connect. Right? So yeah, that's one button uh, is WPS, right? Yeah, WPS. Wi-Fi wi protected setup, I, but, which is an, an protected. Which is an, <laughs> an oxymoron in, right. in itself. Yeah, I, I would strongly recommend against the the, the Wi-Fi protected uh, yeah. setup. Manual setup is, is going to be better because you have control, you know how it's set up, you know how it's configured. You might have to learn a, a few things in order, in order to, you know, to, to do it. But in the long run, I think you're going to be more secure and you're going to understand you know, how your network is set up. Whereas with, with the Wi-Fi uh, protected setup, you, you don't even know. You, just, you hit the button, it automatically does something and you really don't know. It's a hacker's dream. What level of security did it did it configure and, and, and you know how is it set up? Yeah, yeah. It, it, is, it is a hacker's dream. Dream come true. You do a little bit of war driving to find the network, and mm -hmm. you find that, and it's just minimally configured. Mm -hmm. And and usually it's something. Uh, any device in the network could be the vector or the path in mm -hmm. to the entire network. So your weakest link is is the path in, and it's usually something like a, a nanny cam or a, a webcam or yeah. something like that that has a basic username and password, and you leave the default settings, mm -hmm. admin admin or something like that, right? I, I need to put a picture up here. This, is, uh, this has been my network at times. Don't let this happen to you. This is why we have Wi-Fi. You'll see all these cables in here. This is, I, and I got to bring this up. I don't see any other cable color but gray. I think there's one blue one in the whole mess. You'll see the switch has a whole bunch of ports in the back. Everything's Ethernet. They look like homemade cables. <laughs> And there's nothing but spaghetti, and then there's a Wi-Fi router in the back. <laughs> this reminds me that, that I, uh, I have to make spaghetti for dinner. Tonight, right. I need some sauce. Right. <laughs> Don't let this happen to you because uh, when this happens to you, you're you're ripe for hacking. And, yeah, and it's if a there's mess. a failure, you can't track it down. It's it's a total mess to try to trace <laughs> anything. You might as well just unplug everything and start from scratch. Yeah, and that's and I've done that before. So let's talk about now. There's a couple of features that routers have built in that help with security and obscurity. Mm -hmm. So let's go through a couple of those things. First of all, is NATing, a network address table, right? So explain to us the network addressing table and how it works in a router, public and private internet. Okay, so there are there are three um, IP address ranges that are called private address ranges. And so those can be reused uh, on internal networks by, by anyone. So you buy a Wi-Fi router and it comes usually with, it's, it's configured for the internal network to, to come up as like 192.168. 1.1. 1.1 or yeah. 0 0.1 or something. Anything 192.168, that, that's part of a private address range. Everybody can reuse that. But it's not uh, allowed, it's not routable on the internet. So what happens is as those packets leave your network, your router is going to translate that private 192.168 address to whatever public IP address it got from your ISP. So as, as the packets uh, leave, it's translated from 192.168 to whatever the, you know, the uh, public range is. And when the responses come back, the router translates it back and sends it back to you know, the host that, that sent it, sent the original message. So that's, that's how network, that's network works. address translation. The addresses are put in there. So once I get from the public internet to your router with the public address, your router can say, oh, well, this message is intended for this PC or mm -hmm. your DVR. Yeah, it keeps a table of, you know, who sent what request, so it knows, you know, how to send things 
back. So it's, it's kind of a man in the middle. It's a go-between. It's passing the packets back and forth. And e even though th this was not uh, originally uh, invented and designed as a security feature, one of the side effects of this is it, it makes it almost impossible for someone to scan your internal network because they, they can't because the, the uh, private addresses won't be sent over the internet to, to get in, right? They can only scan the uh, public IP address that's on your router. So it has some good side effects. A little obscurity. Uh, yeah, yeah a, little, a little bit of, of, of obscurity, yeah. It's, a, it's another layer. So in, in security, we keep saying it, defense in depth. Mm -hmm. You have to layer it like an onion. You can't just depend on one thing to keep you safe. You gotta mm -hmm. apply all the layers, and, and the theory is, you apply enough layers to deter somebody and make it easier for them to hack somebody else. I hate to say that, but I'm just going to pass them off to the next guy who's yeah. not configuring stuff right. So netting, net, network address table, feature one. Feature two, uh, these, uh, these routers um, pass things to the internal network, and to get onto the router, you need a username and password to find anything out, right? But mm -hmm. they come with a default setup. Yeah, so they'll come with a default admin password and username set in. And believe me, the, the default uh, passwords for every model are out there on the web. Showdown.io. Is yeah. just, yep. yep, you just look it up. And, and so the first thing, the first thing you need to do when you plug that in yeah. is change that admin password. And if the, and so, some of them allow you to change the username as well. Right. I, I would change both if both. you could. Yeah. If, uh, yeah. Uh, so you 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 want to change that right away. Most uh, decent routers will also allow you to limit uh, what networks can connect to the admin interface. So if you can limit it to only your internal network, that's a lot more secure. It, you, usually, people don't need to uh, to connect to the admin. Uh, interface to, to configure their router from the internet, right? They're going to be on their, their internal home network. So if you can restrict it to only the internal home ne network or even to a single IP address. That's even better. Is even, yeah. It is even better. Yeah. So I know, I know the setting on most routers, it, that's WAN management or managed by WAN, W-A-N, so wide area network. Mm -hmm. That means you can get to it from the outside. From the internet. You want to disable that. If yeah. it's enabled, disable that, go for LAN or local area network. Exactly. Which is, internal, so you want to turn that off. Good, so we have the username and password, we have NATing, and we have only local management, so you have to manage your network from within your network. Mm -hmm. So what else should we do? Well, uh, what else should you do? You should choose a strong uh, security uh, encryption protocol. Right. You don't want to use WEP. I'm surprised, -E I'm surprised <laughs> that it's even Still supported. Why is that on an option so many for routers? wireless encryption know. protocol? Right. Yeah. You want WPA2 if, if at all possible. That that's the kind of the standard now. If yeah. if you have an older router that doesn't support WPA2, you might get by with WPA. But you absolutely don't want WEP. WEP oh. is almost like having WPA2. Nothing. Now there's two options in this always, but most people get confused. Mm -hmm. You can't. There's personal WPA2 personal and mm -hmm. WPA2 enterprise. You can't do enterprise unless you have a server managed system with yeah. a domain inside your network. So that's that's more complex setup. So go for yeah. WPA2 personal. The enterprise uh, is is when you have a, a centralized authentication server. Uh, then most you know home users aren't going to have this. So you, you you use the personal, which is also sometimes called PSK or pre shared key. Right. Just means that you have a, a key or a pre shared password. Everyone who's going to join the network. Uh, you know, gets that password, and that's that's what you log in with. You know, we should we should also state that the devices now coming off the shelves could still have the the hack for WPA2 mm -hmm. uh, possible on that device. So you should Absolutely. run a firmware update as soon as you get into that device. There's mm -hmm. always an interface in your admin management for that device that allows you to run a firmware update over the internet. You should do that as soon as you get it because that's going to disable. Uh, the crack attack. That's the crack attack. Yeah, yeah, you can have that. So we're gonna take a short break and go to commercial and pay some bills uh, and then come right back. Until then, stay safe.
Hi everyone, I'm Andrea Gabrieli. I'm the host for Young Talents Making Way here on FinTech Hawaii. We talk every Tuesday at 11 a.m. about things that matters to tech, matter to science, uh, to the people of Hawaii with some extraordinary guests. The students uh, of our schools who are participating in science fair. So Young Talents Making Way every Tuesday at 11 a.m. only on FinTech Hawaii. Mahalo. Hi, my name is Bill Sharp, host of Asian Review, coming to you from Honolulu, Hawaii, right here in the center of the Pacific Ocean. Asian Review is the oldest of the 35 or so shows um, uh, broadcast by ThinkTech Hawaii. We've been in production since 2009. Our goal is to provide you, the viewer, with information, breaking information about events in Asia, Asia being anything from Hawaii west to Pakistan, from the Russian uh, Far East, South to Australia and New Zealand. We hope to see you every Monday afternoon at 5 p.m. Welcome back to the Cyber Underground. I'm Dave Stevens, your host, here with Hal, the network guy. Hi, Hal. Hey. <laughs> We're going to get right back to it. We're going to take a moment for a security moment. This is something Andrew Lanning uh, in in instituted in the show, and I love this. Mm -hmm. We come back for the break, we do a security moment. I have a warning for all those people out there. Something called slider theft. I'm going to put an image up right here. This is an image of a young lady at the pump. You can see she's got the white car there. Her gas uh, pump uh, or her gas uh, tank is open there. She's using the credit card in the, in the station at the pump, right? Mm -hmm. Which behind pump? her, someone has pulled in and is sneaking into her car from the other side and stealing whatever's on her seat. I assume it's probably a purse or a wallet or something. And uh, many people do this. You know, they, they get their credit card and they're just walking to the pump. So they leave mm -hmm. their wallet or whatever on the car seat there. And that's what these guys go in they, and they get. Now, thankfully, we were able to film this. They don't have a front license plate, but they're on film. And uh, there's a lot of features there that police can use to tag these guys. And as a matter of fact, I believe in this image, these guys try to use the credit card uh, half an hour later, but it was already canceled and, uh, and they're already caught. So, you know, lesson to thieves, don't do this where there's a camera. But uh, these guys are pretty bold. They'll swoop Clearly, right in yeah. behind you. Yeah, I mean, that's bold. They don't mm -hmm. care. And he knows he's on camera. He knows and he, you think he does? He's got to. I, would, I mean, doesn't everyone know that, that all of those gas stations have surveillance cameras? I don't know. I thought everybody knew that Facebook was taking my data and selling it. Uh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> and everybody's surprised now. I used, to, I used to tell people, what do you, how do you think they're making money? You think you just offer a free service as a billion dollar company? You are the product. <laughs> You're the product. You are the product. Yes. <laughs> That's right. So let's get, let's get back to, um, uh, we're configuring our routers, right? And there's, a, there's a number of other things we can do. And, and we got to mention uh, several segments of society, including gamers. But uh, before we do that, let's go into um, most routers will have an interface that you can view. Right. Uh, I know I used to use Linksys a lot, and it's always a browser interface. I think Asus has this too. Mm -hmm. And you enter the, um, the I, I believe, the lowest address in the range on your browser, like 192.168.1.1, mm -hmm. and it comes in with a login page. And if you were smart, you change your login to something else, uh, and you can log in and manage your router mm -hmm. and the security features. And the first time that you... Connect. Uh, sometimes you, you you need to do it from uh, an Ethernet cable. You have a to cable, plug not wireless, in. Right. You have to plug into one of the the four LAN connections on the back of, of the uh, the router, and open up a browser and you put in that that first address in the network 192.168.1.1 or something similar to that, and then you should you should see a, a an administrative you know interface come up uh, in the browser. You log in with that. Uh, the full uh, uh, admin name and password, and then immediately change it. Immediately. <laughs> immediately change yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And one of the other things you, you can do when you're first setting it up, uh, you, you do have uh, the ability to, uh, to limit what computers can connect to your Wi-Fi network based on the, the the MAC address. The MAC address is uh, an address that every network interface card, wired or wireless, has burned into it right, on, a, on a chip from the manufacturer. It's from, unique. From the factory. For every device. It, it's supposed to be unique. Now, it's, yeah. it's certainly possible to spoof them, especially with virtual machines where you can pretty much put in any, uh, right. any address you want. But 
limiting to those MAC addresses, again, as you said, it's one more, one more layer list. of the onion. Right. You want to put one more hurdle in front of someone who's trying, right. to, trying to get it. So it's, it's not high security, but it's, it's one more layer. Right. So uh, I know on, uh, on some wireless routers, you can connect all of your devices, and it shows you a list of all the MAC, MAC addresses of the devices that are connected to your network. And there's so your whitelist. Real easy, copy and paste those into, in, into your, your MAC address, uh, allowed list, right, and disallow everything else. And then, unless you, you get a new computer, uh, you should be limited just to those, uh, to, to those devices. And so that's, again, that's just one more, one more layer thing. that you can, uh, that, that you can add in, you know, you know for, for, for security. Now, I don't know if you've done this on your routers, but I always enable a guest network. Yes, that's a this great is, so idea. So it's, it's a virtual LAN or a virtualized uh, local area network that's specifically for other logins. Uh, and you don't have to enable MAC addresses. This is when your relatives come over mm -hmm. or, or someone wants to, to use your, your internet really quick or you have someone's, uh, we have a pet sitter when we leave, so she uses a guest network. Mm -hmm. You can enable that so they cannot get onto your network, but they can still use the internet. Yeah, the, 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 advantage is, the, the advantage of that is they have internet access, but they're segregated from your main network. Right, so just a, another layer, because you don't want to you know, give everybody, like all your cousins, your Wi-Fi password. Well, <laughs> unless you do, but Unless you, you do, you might don't. want to. Uh, you, know, you should have a guest network, so I always enable that. Let's go over, um, now, when gamers set these systems up, there's specific requirements. I put in my Xbox, I put in my PS2, and every game will operate on ports. Now, ports are mm -hmm. doors into your system, right? And you have to enable these doors, uh, otherwise the game is not gonna work. And a lot of people play online gaming, and so you have to open up these ports. So we have to enable something called port forwarding. You wanna go over port forwarding for us? So we talked about network address translation in that no one's able to scan your internal network because right, they can only get as far as that public IP address on your router. That's unless you enable port forwarding. Enable port forwarding and packets come to that particular port that now you've forwarded into your internal network. Those packets come through the NAT, through the router into the, the internal network. So To the specific machine I told it, like I, I, I enabled yeah. port 5400 or whatever, for 192.168.1.101, that's mm -hmm. a specific machine or my Xbox, mm -hmm. right? So I've enabled just that port to just that machine inside my network. Yeah, ho hopefully you've uh, limited it to just that. <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> just, just that one machine. But it, it's still, you still have to be aware that now you, you're still allowing something through. So it, it's, a, it's definitely a, a, a security concern and you have to be uh, aware of that. And, you want to minimize that as much as possible. Now, if you need to do that for your game, you know, and you limit it to, to your one uh, device, you know, it's not the end of the world. But you want to limit that as 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 much as possible. If you stop playing that game or get rid of it, you should take that off. You should take that off. Yeah. Because it's another. Uh, it's it it. It's just a, a hole through your firewall that someone might be able to use to uh, sneak through. It's a pinprick where yeah. light can get through, mm -hmm. and you're taking off layers of that onion. Yes, yeah, right. you, you've made a hole through one of those layers now in that in, the, in that onion, and, and somebody might be able to target that to get to get through. So we've done MAC addressing, um, uh, we've done the port forwarding, we've done the username and password for the admin account, running a firmware update. Absolutely, it's absolutely necessary, and, and not just not just when you first install it. But periodically, whenever there's one available, you, you want to do the update. Right, so you should check back every once in a while. And the more advanced routers will tell you, if you log in every once in a while, every month, and you look, it'll probably have some kind of indicator saying, hey, there's an update available, you should run this. And forewarn, uh, when you run that, your whole network's gonna be down for a couple of minutes. Four or five minutes or so, yeah. yeah. It's, it's gonna be bad. What else can we do? Uh, SSIDs. We so, can so explain SSID. SSIDs. So the SSID, is the, the the network name that you find. So when you walk around with your phone or other other wireless device and you see, oh, th there's Joe's network, there's a Starbucks public network, th those are the SSIDs of those networks and they're, they're just broadcasting out. Here I am, here's my name, connect to me, you know, I'm, I'm this network. Well, uh, you can disable that and it, 
it's not going to make it impossible for someone to find your network who knows what they're doing, but people aren't going to see it just pop up. It's going to be a little bit harder for them uh, to lo lo locate your network and, and figure out what the name is. Not too so, many people know how to run AeroDump and, yeah. and scan a network for things that are hiding, exactly. right? Yeah. So what war drivers will, but most people will just walk around with, like you said, their mobile phone and yeah. look for an SSID. So and you can disable that, but if you're already connected, if you're already connected, it's no problem. It's no problem because the the uh, the SSIDs are saved, right? So once you connect the first time and, and you check the box to save it, it's saved there. You don't need you don't need to put it again. It, it, it'll be able to find it. And it, even if it's not, as long as you know the name, you can manually put in the network name and and it will find it. You know, fine. But it, oh. but it won't just advertise itself and and just pop up. So. What I like to do is connect all of my devices first, yep. make it really easy to connect, get them all connected, and then get it saved on all, all of my wireless devices, and then I can just disable the SSID. Now, you brought up something just a minute ago. Um, when you log onto the device, you see the SSID, but then when you try to connect, it's gonna ask you for a username and password. There's another place where you should change the username and password because some uh, networks, so if I have a router that's got an admin username and password and I have a guest network, now that guest network has a different username and password. Mm -hmm. Or at least it better have a different username it and should. password. It should. It should have it. <laughs> so you should change that to a good password. And we should discuss good passwords. Yeah, good passwords. Uh, three characteristics of, of a good password. They should be long, right? I mean, it, they used to say six characters, eight characters. Now it's what, 12 to 15 characters? I think the military is up to 14. Password. Yeah. It's really hard. You have to enter something like my Scooby Snacks taste yeah. good or something really good. But it's, it's really hard. But then you, what, what people were doing is putting, um, for different words, they put it in a different language. Mm -hmm. Because there's a di dictionary attack, right? You do a brute force attack and you run uh, all the di dictionary words in different order mm -hmm. with uh, you know caps in different places against something and you try to crack the password that way. So if you plug in another language, well, someone's got to go out and get another language. They've got to be using at least two dictionaries, right? One from each. You're right, from each one from each. And there are dictionary you know, out, out there, I mean, for all languages, but uh, again, it, it just makes it a little bit harder, right? right. Just you want to, and white space counts. Mm -hmm. You can put white space in your password. So it could be a phrase. Mary had a little lamb. Change a lamb for another word could from another be language. The, a line from your favorite song or something or a quote or, yeah, we're, we're, we're past the point where, where, you know, short words make good passwords. Now we're into phrases and lines. That's now a passphrase, and not a password, yeah. Poems or Oh, uh, before we go, one last tip for everybody out there hooking up their Wi-Fi network. I found that, um, uh, First of all, you might interfere with somebody else's channel. There's multiple channels you can choose, so if the frequencies might bump into your neighbor. You can change channels. Mm -hmm. What else you can do uh, to limit the amount of traffic on your Wi-Fi network is if a device is close to your router and it does have an Ethernet port, like a printer or your Apple TV or something like that, you can hardwire it. You can run mm -hmm. an Ethernet cable there yeah. and take Wi-Fi traffic off your Wi-Fi network which just uh, gives you another layer in the security. That device will not be exposed in any way to your Wi-Fi, and it's only on your physical LAN, which mm -hmm. is a little bit better security. Any other tips with our last 10 seconds? Uh, just uh, with regard to the passwords, uh, complex. So lots of different types of characters. That's why they always tell you use numbers, uppercase characters, lowercase characters, special and characters. special characters. Special There's about 100 different characters on a keyboard. Try to use as many different varieties of them as you can. And remember them. And, and don't <laughs> write it down on a post-it note. Yeah, don't put the post-it note on your computer. All right, thanks for joining us, everybody. Come back next week uh, while we do another uh, great episode of Cyber Underground with some great content. Until then, stay safe.